Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there, I hope you're doing okay this week. I'm Mike along with Joel. Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast. We're glad you're with us. I hope that you'll tell a friend about what's going on here. Just a a little weekly get together, less than 15 minutes, where you can be encouraged and reminded about what Jesus Christ did on our behalf. He did for us what we were unable to do. That's a demonstration of love like you've never experienced before. And uh, I have the feeling that most of us have barely tapped into the fullness, the height, the depth, the width, and so on of the love of God. We're just seeing it almost like a far off lighthouse almost. At the same time, at least with our understanding, sometimes I think it feels that way. At the same time, this, this love does envelop us and it dwells within us. And we'll be talking some more about that and a few other things related to it on today's program. And I present to you, please hold your applause till the end. I present to you, Joel Brzezinski. Okay, you can applaud now. (laughs) You watched the royal wedding. Here I am. Yeah, that was how many weeks ago? (laughs) Well, it was a a handful. (laughs) Um. Well, yeah, running with something you said there. You talked about just, you know, how we've barely even comprehended the the height and the breadth and the depth and the width of God's love. And and I think, and this really goes along with what we're, we really want to talk about here, I think a big reason for that is, you know, because Paul's prayer was that people would grow in that, 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 that they would know the awesomeness and wonderfulness of God's love. What is the height and the breadth and the depth and the width of God's love? So it's something that we can know in this lifetime. I don't think fully, but it's something that we can definitely grow in. But I think that a big reason why many in the church are not growing in it is because they're trying to grow in their performance instead. We were talking about this before recording, but a lot of what you hear in the church today— it's see, we're not church bashers. There are some— people who would call themselves grace people, but they tend to bash the church. We're not church bashers. We love the church. We love the body of Christ. And so we don't want to bash the church. We just, from our own experience and from the experience that we've heard from listeners and from interaction with other people, we know that in the church today, this is what goes on. There are a lot of teachings that are performance-based, that are legalist, uh, legalistic-based, um, pe- you know, trying to get people to change, trying to get people to uh, change their performance, become better at this, that, and everything else, become better Christians, growing in righteous behavior, so to speak. And there's a lot of that. But unfortunately, that type of thing, law teaching, rules teaching, here's what you got to do teaching, that doesn't really help people to grow in the ways that they think that it's going to help people to grow. But if we could lay that aside, and again, there's nothing wrong with changing your behavior. Paul said, renew your mind and be trans, you know, be transformed through the renewing of the mind. We're not against transformation. We're not talking about that. We're, we're talking about this constant preaching of principles and rules and laws that really don't empower the believer in the way that the preacher might think that they do. And so I think a lot of people, what we're missing out on is growing in our understanding of God's love, of how precious we are to him, of how he truly sees us, of how righteous he has made us without us ever having done a thing. I said last week that there is no righteousness other than God's righteousness. If I'm trying to attain to some standard of righteousness, I'm missing out (laughs) on God's righteousness. I mean, he's gifted me with it, but I'm I'm missing out on on growing in in my understanding of that because I'm trying to become something that God has already made me to be. So uh, we want to grow 
not in trying to become a better person, but in understanding God's love, his peace, his joy, the gift of his righteousness, and see what happens from there, and, and just enjoy that God enjoys us. Enjoy that God enjoys us. What you're talking about is important because, and, and this is the story that we find in the pages of the Bible. The Jewish people under the law in the first covenant, their pursuit was righteousness. When the law was given and they agreed to it, they said, hey, clenching their fists, nose in the air, flexing their biceps, we can do this. We can do this. Pride and arrogance. It took center stage because what they were essentially saying was, we can do this. This thing that you've given us, this covenant that's now established with this law thing, it will be righteousness to us. And so that was their pursuit. They pursued righteousness by works apart from faith because the law is not of faith, the book of Galatians tells us. In fact, when Paul was writing to the Galatians, you can check it out uh, starting in chapter 3 and throughout the chapter really throughout much of the book, but just even if you start in chapter 3 and read down that column, um, you're going to find out where Paul referred to the law as the flesh. People were trying to perfect the flesh, and you just that's something that Jesus came to deliver people from. But that's what the Jews were doing, trying to establish their own righteousness, but never attaining it, whereas we non-Jewish people ended up attaining it apart from works by faith. And so, the righteousness of God has been gifted to us. And, and I, I like how you say it, Joel, that we, there's nothing, there, we cannot become more righteous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, doesn't that take some of the pressure off? I hope so. And now this frees us up to be able to experience with this new identity and, and a greater understanding of God's love and grace, it now frees us up to be able to, to live in a way, with, with the life of God in us, to live in a way where we can actually enjoy God and this special relationship that he he has established with us in Christ. Going back to some of what we were talking about last week, too, which sort of ties into what we're already talking about, Joel, but the church, I like, I, I like how you pointed out that we are not church bashers. Yes, I understand among, amongst the grace community, especially the, the frustration because of what many of us spent years under certain teachings and things that just brought us down, right? Uh, I get that. But the church is really made up of, it's not just a, an organization with a 501c3 nonprofit status. The church is the people. At least that's what it should be. And that's what we should think of when we say the church, not just a church organization or a denomination or something like that. But the church as a whole The church teaching that many of us have experienced through the different denominations, whatever it is that you've been brought up under, just think about this for a minute. They have, by and large, for the most part, have been taking us people down a path that is actually a dead-end street. Hmm. And it actually, this is is mind-boggling when you stop and think about it as you begin to understand the word of God in, in separation of the old covenant and the new covenant. And, and that is that they have been taking us down a path that will lead to more sinning, more condemnation, more guilt, and more frustration. And in some ways, it will often lead to less love, mm-hmm. <laughs> either love being received and understood from God and being able to extend that love to, to others. And, and how have they been doing that? They've been doing it through something Paul called the ministry of death and condemnation, referring to not only the Ten Commandments, which he pointed out, but all of the law uh, that was given to Israel back in the day of Moses, over 600 plus rules, statutes, and commandments that at least a, at least a small portion of them get mixed into Christian dogma and, and uh, this, this mixture of, of law and grace throws people off, brings confusion, and as I said, often brings condemnation and frustration and 
all kinds of things that people experience in life. You, you and I have been hearing from people more frequently lately about uh, depression and needing psychiatric help and being on medication, largely because of things that have come down on them through church teaching, Joel. That's right. That's the, and, it's, and it shouldn't be that way uh, because the gospel— is the very thing through which we're meant to be freed up <laughs> and is as a joy is meant as a joyful thing for us the problem was uh that sin had entered the world and death through sin and so jesus came and he is the way the truth and the life he died on the cross for us and he rose again and and we rose again with him those of us who are in faith are with jesus christ in his resurrection and we have life now, and that's the real issue. But many people, because of uh, bad teaching in the church, we'll just put it that way, are not living as if they're alive, are living with depression and, and sadness and anxiety and worry and fear, all because of what they've been taught in the church, rather than living in the joy and the peace and the glory and, and the, the truth of the righteousness that we've received as a gift from God himself, if your idea of righteousness is something that you have to attain to, then you're, you're missing out on, on the understanding that it's something that you've received as a gift. You see, uh, ever since I've been a believer, I've actually never become, I've not become any more righteous than I was when I first believed. I've never become any less righteous either, because it's not based upon my behavior. Now, my behavior has changed over the years, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, hopefully for the better, but that's not what my identity is based upon. That's not what my life in Christ is based upon. It's not based upon my behavior change. I was born righteous. That is, I was born again when I received Jesus Christ, I received the gift of his righteousness, so I was born into this righteousness. It's my identity. It's who I am. Same with you listening. It's something that we've inherited, and it's not that we're better than anybody else. This righteousness, all of this stuff that we're talking about, God has made it available to all. Jesus Christ died for everybody. He rose again for everybody. Everybody has the chance to receive this by grace through faith. The problem in the church today is that we have told people that they receive this free gift of salvation, but then once once they've received the free gift of salvation and they've received this righteousness, they've received the life of Jesus Christ, uh, we start putting all these rules and laws, and it's really nothing but a flesh trip again. We save them from the flesh. You know, your flesh can't save you, but then we put them back under the you know, trying to empower the flesh to do right, and that's never what this life in Christ was meant to be about. Uh, we've run out of time for this one, so we'll have to pick up some more next week on this really astounding revelation and understanding of what the gospel really is, about what life in Christ really is. It's not about what we can do. It's not about our efforts and our, our own attempts at righteousness. It's about the free gift that we have received freely from God. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.